is yours. How are you? Hi, how are you doing? Thank Good. you. Um, my name is Desiree Wright. I'm with JMAC for Families. Um, I have been involved with I have been involved with ACS family regulation system since I was 17 years old. ACS took my son from me when I was 17 and he was in foster care for three years. His time in foster care damaged him. I am now 43 and my kids and I are still being harassed by ACS. I am a parent advocate. I work for movement for family power to make changes to the system. But the other day I got a knock on the door from ACS and it felt like I felt like that 17 year old girl mm. all over again. I forgot my rights, the PTSD, PTSD kicks in, yes. I'm anxious, I'm up all night, I get scared all over again, I feel like I'm going to lose my family. And it brings back all those memories that, I, that are not healthy for me. Most parents have, who have dealt with ACS have the same reaction. It's a traumatic situation. ACS and the child welfare system targets blacks black and brown communities by illegally <coughs> stripping, stripping their child away from them. When ACS comes into a home, it doesn't feel like they are there to help you. ACS, ACS is more powerful than the police, and that is not okay. The criminal justice system had a, has a burden of proof, but the family court only requires preponderance of, a, of evidence. The criminal justice system has more laws to protect criminals for their freedom. But there are no laws to protect mothers to keep their families together. Parents need to be read their Miranda rights when ACS enters a home and violates our privacy, just like they do for criminals. Police do not investigate things for 90 days, so why should I have to be investigated for 90 days? Why do criminals get a second chance at life when mothers aren't given a second chance to raise their children? Every time ACS comes to my home, they make, they make my five-year-old strip down so that they can check his body for bruises, and then they make me leave the room to question him. It is illegal for minors to be questioned without a consenting adult, so why is it legal for ACS to do this? Parents' rights are violated all day long. We have no rights as parents, and there are no laws protecting us. Even with anonymous reporting, the person who made the call is not penalized for wasting all of these people's times. But it is harming, it is harming, but it's harming the parents and their families and interrupting their lives for what reason? This experience is traumatizing for families, parents, and children. And every time ACS comes to my, to my son, comes, my son has to ask me why are they coming and why are they looking at his body? What am I supposed to tell a five-year-old when he's asking me questions like that? ACS need new laws. Okay, Miss Wright, thank you for the testimony, and I know that was that was hard. Um, so, so let me let me focus on this area of your testimony, which really caught me. That you said the PSD uh, when they knock on the door, and uh, I believe others are nodding. You have that. You do me a favor, just talk to me a little bit about that, because. Um, please talk to me a bit, a little bit about that. Sure, no problem. Um, well, uh, I graduated. I'm in school for criminal justice. I'm going to John Jay next. So um, when ACS came to my house um, not too long ago, all of everything that I'm learning, everything that I'm retaining, everything that I know is right, mm -hmm. just goes out the window, and it's I feel right all over like that 17 year old again that ACS ran over years ago. And so um, all of that anxiety comes in. I can't sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm up. I'm hugging my child. I'm feeling like he's going to be removed from my home. And these are things that are unhealthy for a mom to even raise a child. And so when my child was asking me questions about why these people come into his house and trying to question him, I don't have answers. And so that takes me right back to that little girl all over again. I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. That the really, really means a lot. Look, I, I, part of the reason why I took over this committee is because I believe that trauma is the enemy um, on all fronts. Um, Certainly for, for families, when I mean, I can only imagine the trauma, what, how I would react if somebody tried to take my 12-year-old away from me. I can only imagine how I would react. I don't think I would. It wouldn't be good. Yeah, um, I have a 24-year-old. Yeah. My son is 24, and he does not like ACS, and that's the um, 
tra trauma that he has dealt with being in foster let, care. Let me ask you about that, because th so the, the, the thing that we are working um, uh, the most on is to prevent and help kids who are traumatized. Um, can you tell me a tiny bit more about your son's experience about the strip searches? I know this is rough, but I think this, I, I, you know, my, my problem is this is not to point fingers at ACS, and I want this to be clear for everybody or any CPS worker or anybody. The point is it's not about, for me, um, the person who's doing it, it's about the system is set up so badly that we're forcing caseworkers into these um, to make decisions. There's all kinds of problems with this all over the place. Um, but, but traumatizing kids, when the state traumatizes kids, it drives me insane. Um, so do me a favor, tell me a little bit more about that so everybody understands it, please. Just the other day um, when they came to my house, um, he was in the tub and he had to actually come out the tub so they can see his body. And he didn't understand that at all. And he's like- How old? He's five. So he's looking at me like, why are they, you said that people are not supposed to see me like in my birthday suit. <laughs> And these people are literally like Strangers making me are. turn around. And at five, they don't understand that. And and that's tra that's traumatizing to yeah. them. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, wow. thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Just so you know, we are in the, the, the this committee's particular work, and we've talked about policy, but the overall general thing we're going for, we are looking to prevent trauma from happening to kids in the first place and if it's happened we're looking to get them assistance um, and also we are looking to close off the avenues where government is doing the traumatizing um, so yeah there's one little clap there that's okay <laughs> I, now I got to pay that guy five bucks um, no but we passed a bill and this is a little off topic but we passed a bill um, to end the school to prison pipeline where young elementary school mm -hmm. kids so we have a bill we're waiting for the governor to sign it that says you can't arrest any kid under 12 for anything Amen. Like, except a homicide but hold on no kids under 12 have ever been committed uh, convicted of homicides in New York State so we gave that one away but yeah no more traumatizing kids because what we're doing is you take kids who are in vulnerable circumstances who may or may not have been traumatized already and then the government gets involved and we make it worse Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yes. So thank you for sharing today. I really I appreciate just it. Add yes, one more please. thing about um, TPR. Um, I did 10 years in um, federal prison. Mm -hmm. And um, like he was saying, there are no laws in there, state laws to help moms who are losing their rights to their children while incarcerated. So with that, it's like the 1522 rule. If a mom is doing 10 years, she has no rights to fight for her kids. We don't get paperwork in federal prison letting us know that um, the, the case is in front of the judge to be tpr So there are a lot of women in federal prison and in state prisons that are losing their rights to their kids illegally. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll take a look into it. Ms. Wright, thank you. Everybody, thank you for your testimony today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um,